Ooh, what's up, y'all? It's your boy Chef from Off the Dome. Tired as hell. Just got off of work. Here to talk about the new special on Netflix about uh, Rocco's modern life. Static clean. Overall, first, I rate the special. I get about a 6.5 out of 10 because I was kind of bored most of the time. And that's probably because I'm only 21. I didn't grow up watching Rocco's Modern Life. I don't get the adult jokes. Well, I didn't. I went around for the adult jokes. I get the adult jokes now, obviously. But I went around for it when I was a kid. I wasn't a teenager watching it, you know, reminiscing or discovering a new humor. I just wasn't there for it. But the little bit I do know about Rocco's Modern Life, I know that it was set to be a good special. And it was. In the beginning, it was kind of slow. It was dragging. Then Rocco landed back inside of... um. 2019 Oville. He did that and whatnot. So, you know, he did that. Uh, Mr. Big Head was at work. He was crunching his numbers. He didn't see when Rocco's shit went past it and made it go to zero, etc. And there's a couple of gems in the story, like when Mrs. Big Head comes back over, you get the overarching theme of her liking Rocco a little bit too much. Rocco can't get along with the change. It's a theme in the whole story is about change. Rocco doesn't like to change. Why, you know, the, um, dang, I've got Philbert and uh, the cow guy. I've got that man's name. But they um, they get along with the change. They like the iPhones. They like all this stuff. Rocco doesn't like it. Rocco simply wants to sit down and watch cartoons. He wants to watch the fat, I mean, dang. He wants to watch the fat heads, yeah. He wants to watch the fat heads. He wants to watch some smash things. He wants to watch that. But the son, um, Ralph, he went away to go find himself. He's going to be important later on in the story when we jump to the end of this. But anyway, after um, Mr. Big Head didn't see that Rocco caused his financial downfall by when Rocco went by and caused it to go from $340 billion to zero, he turned it in, and over his lunch break, he found out that his company went bankrupt because of his crunching error. The whole town hated him. They were after him. His boss wanted to fire him. He actually did fire him, and people threatened his life. They said he was going to turn his house into an unemployment office. Rocco only wanted to watch the fathead. So he said, let's just bring back the fathead. A lot of people will miss it. And then Mr. Big Guy said, that's a genius idea. So they had to find the original creator, but the boss, he wanted to um, use... You know, these current writers who don't know anything about cartoons, they were going to be the ones to create it. But Rock was like, no, let's go find Ralph. They searched all over the world, couldn't find a dude. Then they landed in the middle of a desert, and then Ralph was there with ice cream truck, had the um, fat head icicle pops, and um, Philbert and the cow went over there and ate them, and Rocco was, like, trying to convince them to make the cartoon again. Ralph was like, nah, that's not my call no more. I'm making these ice pops like making the truck. Then Rocco said something about his family, saying how they would lose the house. Ralph had a flashback about how the memories of the house and how his mom and dad always loved and cherished him, even when he bit his dad's eye, so-called, and he said, ouch, and they still loved and kissed and made up. So anyway, long story short, after that, he agreed to come to town. But before he went to town, here's the big shocker. Here's the thing that all the, all the people are going to probably get crazy about or mad about. You know, Ralph's like, no, call me Rachel. Because he turned into um, a transgender woman. And Rocco and all them, they were like, cool. You know, so that was it for that. They were just like, cool. They didn't even question it. They said, cool. So he w she felt confident, went into town, went to go meet up with her dad. The dad was like, I have a son, not a daughter. He couldn't deal with the change. And I like the overarching theme of this. The episode came about change. I like how the dad didn't just accept the daughter at first because it shows the real life version of what transgenders go through. It's something that I think conservatives and liberals can get together and say. It is weird having your daughter or son switch sex. It is weird to see them come out as gay. It's weird to see these things sometimes. So when you see it, don't be surprised when you don't get accepted. And I'm not saying you should be hateful and bashful. And by the end of this show, we see that he wasn't hateful and bashful. He wasn't even hateful and bashful towards her in the first place. He just couldn't accept the change. And it made Rachel go away. And then later on when the town needed her the most to remake the cartoons, she finally did after the other creators' ideas sucked. And Rocco didn't like the new cartoon because it wasn't the original smack, um, slapstick-style comedy it was. But it was one with a deeper message. And then it went back to his flashback when his father and mom, when he was little, and um, they, he bit the dad's eye, and the dad still said, oh, that's cute, and they loved each other, and they hugged each other. 
that made a dad snap out of it and say, you know what, that's still my kid at the end of the day. And, you know, it was touching to see that he accepted him after all these things. It's not as bad as people say it is. I've heard some people complain about the transgender messages, how they're forcing down kids' throats. And I normally don't like that. But the way they did, I think, was pretty pretty realistic. Let's say that. It's, it's realistic. And plus, what kid is watching Rocco's Modern Life? I'm 21. I don't even remember it. I watched this guy saw it on Netflix. And I always wanted to watch it, along with the Vader Zim special. Because apparently Nickelodeon wants to make money all of a sudden. But anyway, you know that majority of people watching this Rocco Modern Life special are from ages, probably, realistically, probably ages 26 to about 38. Because that's when these kids were teenagers. That's when adults watched it with their kids. That's when kids were growing up in the 90s actually watched it. My generation, the people that were born in probably 96 to 2002, we probably watched out of curiosity. But we don't know the story like that. We don't know the show like that. Just like we try to pretend that we know Tupac and Biggie music, even though we weren't born for it yet. We were like four years old when Tupac died or someone was not even born. It's a whole 96 nostalgia trip. And it's a good movie overall. That's why I give it a 6.5. It was a couple of boring scenes in it. It was a couple of things I was lost on. But it had a good overall message. And it still has some funny spots in it. So it deserves that average rating. A little bit above average, if I say so myself. Matter of fact, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Just to stop being spiteful, I think it's a decent special. You should go check it out. But it's your boy Chef from Off the Dome. Back again with another video. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Peace out.